does have a big game feel here in Rotterdam for a huge match in the UEFA Nations League. And let me run through the two lineups for you. Ronald Koeman, whose side are going tremendously well after several years in the doldrums. He names the same starting eleven that won against Germany 3-0 in their last game in this competition over in Amsterdam. So no surprise there, but he does switch from 4-4-2 to 4-3-3, we think, tonight. So it's Jasper Sillison in goal, of course, uh, playing second fiddle to Ter Stegen over in Barcelona. The back four, Denzel Dumfries, Matthias De Ligt, the youngest player on the pitch at 19. Kylian Mbappe turns 20 next month. De Ligt doesn't turn 20 until next summer. He's alongside the Netherlands captain, Virgil van Dijk, and a left back, it's Daley Blind. The three in midfield, Martin De Rome, the former Middlesbrough midfielder, is alongside Ajax's Frankie de Jong and Liverpool's Genie van Alden. And then the three up front, Ryan Babbel, whose uh, Besiktas side had a miserable result at the weekend, losing at home to Kasim Passer. Steven Bergwijn on the right, and Memphis Depay, who scored for Lyon at the weekend up front. As for France, well, I think Didier Deschamps would have named the same starting eleven that beat Germany 2-1 in their last the Nations League game, but he's without Lucas Hernandez at left back, so Luca Dinia of Everton comes in. He's also without Paul Pogba, who withdrew from the squad along with uh, Martial and Mendy and Lacazette. So Steven and Zonzi gets a chance alongside N'Golo Kante. And Zonzi, of course, who you'll remember from his time at Stoke City, did great things with Sevilla and is now in Serie A with Roma. So it's Hugo Lloris in goal. The back four, Benjamin Pavard, so impressive at the World Cup, Rafael Varane, Presnel Kimpembe, who hasn't been so impressive, the PSG defender, and Luca Dinia at left back, N'Golo Kante and Steven Nzonzi in midfield, Kante who made his debut against Holland in a 3-2 win in Amsterdam three seasons ago, Kylian Mbappe, Antoine Griezmann and Blaise Matuidi behind Olivier Giroud, and we are underway with the Dutch in their familiar all-orange strip attacking the goal away to our left-hand side and really this should be an absolute cracker because the Dutch have to go all out for victory against the world champions but of course France have won each of the last four meetings against the Dutch and if they get just a draw tonight that is enough for them they'll be through to the semi-finals of the UEFA Nations League next summer by the way, just one of the last nine meetings between these two has resulted in a draw, and that was back in 2004. There are usually goals when these sides meet up. And this is uh, Matthias De Ligt at the bottom of the centre circle, the youngest player on the pitch, passes the ball out to the left-hand side, and it is picked up by De Jong of Ajax. He finds De Roon in the centre circle, and it's back with uh, Matthias De Ligt once again. Alongside me, here in Rotterdam, and really looking forward to this one, I know, is Alvin Martin. Well, the Dutch have started off with the ball, and they've, uh, they've had about 30 passes, not gone anywhere with it, uh, all on the halfway line. But uh, it is going to be a possession-based uh, game, and I think at the moment the French are just saying, OK, well, you can have it back there, try and forward. Depay picks it up into the box, lays it square, it's a chance for Van Alden! And his shot is blocked on the line, I don't know if Lloris got his hands to it, I think it was a really good save from the Tottenham goalkeeper, no one picked up Gini Van Alden inside the penalty area, and it was a really, really good cut back from Depay, who could have gone for goal, the first chance inside the opening two minutes. Well, it's dreadful defended by the French, they've had 30 passes, and all of a sudden it's just one straight one from Depay, he gets in behind the back line of the French, cuts the ball back, I think he meant it for another play, but it ends up at one elder, as you said, I think it is a good save by Lloris. Well, it's a chance for Wijnaldum, who has got nine international goals for Holland. He'll probably feel he should have ten. And that was really before a French player had even touched the ball. They do have it now, although not for long, because, uh, because of the pressure from the Netherlands midfielders. They have the throw on the left-hand side, which is taken by Daly Blint. And he goes back to Frankie de Jong. 
It's interesting, I mentioned just before the game that Didier Deschamps in his press conference said he's the one player that he's really looked at because of his intelligent passing. I think he's a big admirer of the Ajax man. As uh, Holland lets come forward down the right-hand side with Denzel Dumfries of PSV. His cross is blocked. It's out for a throw, which Dumfries takes himself, gets it down the line, looking for the run of Bergvine, but it comes off the... Uh, Dutch striker Bergvine, who also plays for PSV. He scored actually in PSV's 4-1 win away to De Graafschap on Saturday. And it's a throw to the French. They've made a mess of that as well. It's been a, a ropey start here by the world champions. Haven't actually had possession inside the Dutch half as yet, and they still won't because Holland have a throw just past halfway down the right-hand side. I think the uh, the Dutch will be buoyed certainly by the first three minutes uh, because they've uh, kept the ball, albeit in deeper positions, but they've also proved that they can get in behind this back line. That would be a disconcerting, I think, for the Champs because you could have driven a, a bus through there. There was a massive gap between the two centre halves. The only thing is they haven't taken that chance because uh, to score a goal so early on would have been fantastic for the Dutch. Four minutes gone. Netherlands nil, France nil in Rotterdam. You're listening to Talk Sport 2, live UEFA Nations League commentary. And it's a throw to the Netherlands by the corner flag, which Dumfries will take. 22 years of age, it's only his third cap. Throws it back to De Jong. He rolls it square for Depay, just outside the penalty area. Wanted to use Daly Blind, but he made a, a run backwards, and so... It clatters off Griezmann and out for a throw on the left-hand side this time to the Netherlands. Havard gets a foot to it and it does actually come off to Pai last. It goes behind for a goal kick and at last the world champions get the ball back. Well, it gives you an idea about the start that they've had. Holland, you know, they're really uh, knocking the ball about, they keep possession, the movement's good. And I think it's, it's Griezmann... Uh, Mbappe, who have to defend on the edge of their own penalty area, which will then certainly delight Koeman. It is the 28th meeting between these nations. Dutch have won 10 and lost 13, certainly in recent years. This is a fixture that France have had by far the better of. And it's Griezmann picking it up, trying to roll it forward to Matuidi. He's playing in that role we saw in the World Cup, tucked in on the left-hand side. Got a bit of criticism for it, actually, when he uh, played Matuidi there, did uh, Didier Deschamps. No one criticising him now. Clearly knows what he's doing. But he doesn't play as an out-and-out -out wide left player. It just gives a little bit more stability uh, in that three behind Olivier Giroud. Van Dijk playing it square to De Ligt, who plays for Ajax. And he's back with Van Dijk, wearing the captain's armband. Of course, he's already got the better of Kylian Mbappe this season in the Champions League with Liverpool. A tremendous match. Picked up here by De Jong in a very deep area. He's just outside his own D. And Giroud closes him down, so he uses the goalkeeper Jasper Silicin. And he goes out to the right-hand side and De Ligt. Back to Silicin again, who uh, can't get a look in in La Liga with Barcelona, but does play in the Copa del Rey. Barcelona had a, a miserable result at the weekend, lost 4-3 at home to Real Betis. He would have watched Stegen pick the ball out of his net four times at the new camp. Van Dijk in a central position at the back, goes out to the right-hand side and Dumfries crosses halfway, right for the ball towards the edge of the penalty area, which is cleared by Presnel Kimbembe of PSG. And it's out off Dumfries for a throw to France down the left-hand side. It's still nil-nil in Rotterdam. One thing's for sure here, Gary, no one's going to have more touches uh, in, in a Holland shirt, a uh, Dutch shirt, than uh, De Jong. He's, uh, he's the one who plays the deeper of those uh, midfielders, and it is a three. Uh, but everything is orchestrated by him. He keeps possessing the ball, keeps it ticking over. Doesn't look forward too often, but just uh, wants to keep control of the game for the Dutch. You're listening to Talk Sport 2, where it's Netherlands nil, France nil in Rotterdam. A must-win game for the Netherlands if they're to stand a chance of topping this heavyweight group. A1 in the Nations League. Here's Darun down the right-hand side. Right-footed ball up towards the edge of the penalty area, the right corner. It's laid off by 
Ryan Babel, who has uh, dyed red hair. Now it's Dumfries, right side of the box. It's quickly closed down and forced back towards the halfway line. And it is with Van Dijk now in the centre circle. But it's all the Netherlands, they're dominating possession here. Blind down the left to Depay. Now out on the left-hand side. Babel on the right for the time being. Depay faced by two, trying a little bit of trickery, which doesn't come off. And France have it. Giroud with a poor touch, though. And immediately, the Netherlands have it back. And Ronald Koeman said they're here to dominate, but they're very wary of France's pace on the counter-attack. They do want to dominate the ball here, and so far they're doing that. I'm a little surprised that uh, Mbappe's maybe not started on the right-hand side for France, because you would have thought him up against Daly Blint is going to be a, you know, a, a big plus, because uh, look, he's great on the ball, he's a terrific footballer, Blint, but uh, certainly as a defender, one-on-one, -on -one, that pace uh, that, that he hasn't got, Mbappe's got, is a big plus. Here is Blint, well forward, there's a good ball to him from Depay, Blint's cross, cleared to in the centre-back area by Varane only as far as Van Dijk whose layoff is a, a wayward one and a chance for Mbappe to run at the Netherlands here straight through the centre lays it off to the right-hand side and Griezmann who goes back into the uh, left-hand flank it's a cross in towards Griezmann the downward header is comfortably gathered by Sillison, but he was unmarked there, Griezmann, and got the header in, and it was on target. But he'll be disappointed, really, that he hasn't been able to get this, uh, certainly into one of the corners, Gary, because it's a, it's a good ball in, he's unmarked, there's no pressure on the header, uh, it was Blint who actually was a little late reacted to it, and this really should be a finish. And the cross was by the Everton left-back, Luca Dinia, into a great area, but Griezmann couldn't convert it into a goal I'm sure Giroud was looking at that thinking he would have lapped up that opportunity with his aerial prowess of course goals have been hard to come by for Giroud and Chelsea so far this season none in the Premier League just one in all competitions it was picked up here by De Jong who uh, accidentally played a, a one-two with Kante but he kept possession in the end and it's back with uh, De Ligt at the bottom of the centre circle, ten minutes gone, you're listening to Talk Sport 2 in Rotterdam, it's Netherlands nil, France nil. The ball is with Blin down the left-hand side. You can just see how Ronald Koeman has transformed the Netherlands' fortunes here in quite a short space of time. They're full of belief, a young side who've had some really good results recently and it shows they were a right ragged bunch when he took over but he's done a tremendous job so far as the ball is played forward by Bergwijn down the right hand side it's Kimpembe who brings it clear and brings it clear very calmly up to Kante up to Giroud who lays it off for Ingolo Kante again but it's all a little bit haphazard from France and it allows the Dutch to seize possession back and they have it with the man who just keeps them ticking in midfield, De Jong. France, though, scampering back to try and retrieve possession. They've given it away, and it's Bergwijn again in the gloves, up towards Depay, tries to lay it off through the middle. Just got too much on it, and Pavard gets it back to Hugo Lloris. He kicks it long, left-footed, up towards halfway. But it's straight to Denzel Dumfries, the Dutch right-back. He gets it forward to Bergwijn, tries to not make Kimpembe, which was outrageous, really. And the PSG defender was having none of that. He clears up to Kante, and he gets it out to Mbappe down the left-hand side. And he takes on the uh, young, thought the young uh, centre-back De Ligt for pace. And De Ligt, who's just, as I said, younger than Mbappe, is having none of that and just nipped it off his toes. Well, it's the first time Mbappe's been able to open his legs, and uh, he was certainly a match for it, wasn't he, De Ligt? Uh, got a cheer from the crowd, uh, delighted to see him dispossess the Frenchman. And, and they've dominated possession. I think the problem that uh, Koeman will have here is that he's, while he's dominated possession, both teams have had one, one, you know, one decent chance. Uh, you want to see a little bit more than the one chance. You want to see maybe two chances at least being created with the possession that you've had. A long ball up towards uh, the penalty area. It's struck by Depay on his left foot. Caught it sweetly after that layoff with the head of Vinaldum. And uh, the shot from Depay was straight at Hugo Lloris. Strange, really, because they've played. I don't think they've played a ball over, I don't know, 20 yards for the majority. 90% of the pass has been short from uh, from Holland. This just goes route one. 
Babel gets his, uh, his red head on it, who's died here, and it's a chance, it's a really good chance. He struck it well, but it went straight to the Lloris. A really good ball forward by Vinealdum onto the head of Babel. A little cushion header down for Depay, whose shot was straight at the French number one. And it stays nil-nil here, 13 minutes gone. But really, it's all Holland. And they are playing high up the pitch, really looking to put the pressure on France here who only need a draw to guarantee top spot in this elite group of the UEFA Nations League. You're listening to Talk Sport 2, where it's Netherlands nil, France nil, and Van Dijk has it up towards the halfway line and Frankie de Jong. There is another de Jong on the bench, Luke de Jong, who's uh, having an excellent season with uh, PSV. And certainly we may well be seeing him up front later on but I don't think Ronald Koeman felt there was any need to change the side that did so well against Germany last month in Amsterdam and put three goals past them. Bergwijn down the right-hand side. Oh, lovely layoff for Dumfries. And he just couldn't take it in his stride. Luca Dinia gets it away. And they're playing with a real sense of razzmatazz here in the Netherlands. As Blin picks it up, plays it towards the edge of the penalty area. The layoff by Babel for Depay, left-hand side of the box, gets the cross in as well. It goes over the head of uh, the on-rushing Bergwijn. Almost comes through to Dumfries, and France eventually will scramble it away. But it's hard work for the French at the moment. They're having to do a lot of defending. As Kante gets it up to Giroud. Out to Mbappe down the left-hand side. And he goes further back to uh, a more defensive area where it's picked up by Nzonzi and he rolls it square for Rafael Varane now Kimpembe in a central position at the back for France goal is here in Rotterdam a raucous De Kuyp stadium they are looking at building a brand new stadium here the uh, city of Rotterdam agreed a plan to build this new stadium last year as France come forward with Griezmann and the layoff is uh, for Mbappe and the eventual strike for the man hoping to be crowned uh, World Player of the Year goes miles over the crossbar. It's quality football though. It's first real time we've seen them flow there, France. Uh, some lovely good interchange in play, intricate passing. And when the ball actually lands up at Mbappe, you think, OK, up your body up, find the top corner. He was way off uh, getting that one right. The Dutch have, uh, have done what I thought they had to do before the game and that's to get the balance right between playing their football technically being good but also playing it aggressively not over respecting France I think they got that balance perfect up to this point voting for the Ballon d'Or actually comes to an end very soon so it's a last chance for the likes of Griezmann and Mbappe to uh, maybe nab some last minute votes the ball is with uh, De Jong who is in the left back area for the Netherlands Rolls it inside to Martin de Roon, back to his captain Van Dijk. And now it's De Ligt, who looks very composed on the ball, doesn't he? Crosses halfway, plays a right-footed ball through the centre, almost finds the run of Bergwijn, headed forward by de Roon again. France uh, trying to get it away, there's a foul there on Griezmann by uh, Jeannie Wijnaldum, who's shown the yellow card for that challenge on Antoine Griezmann, and you can hear the jeers from the home crowd for that decision. Well, it seems to be uh, you know, a really harsh uh, first yellow card, doesn't it, in the game? You feel like it doesn't mean a challenge of any significance. This is one he's entitled to go for, and in my opinion, that's come up far too early. To the referee, by the way, a familiar figure, Anthony Taylor from Greater Manchester. And he books the Liverpool player, Jeannie Vinealdum. First yellow card of the night, and I'm sure that won't be the last one. Well, the problem is that once you get one out for that sort of innocuous challenge, Gary, then you, you, know, you, you, you put yourself under pressure as a referee to get them out regular. 17 minutes gone here on Talk Sport 2. Netherlands nil, France nil. Chances for both sides, though. In the early stages, Hugo Lloris has had to make a couple of saves already. One of them from uh, Vinaldo. There's a foul there on Ryan Babel. And that uh, will be a free kick to the Netherlands. They try to take it from five yards closer to the goal referees having none of that quite rightly and they have taken it now from the correct position and it's gone out to the left and Daley Blint formerly of Manchester United now at Ajax 
and it's with De Ligt in the centre circle. Another foray forward from him and he's squeaked it out to the left-hand side and Blint has tried to cushion the header down but all he's managed to do is put it out of play. Blint earning his 59th cap for the Netherlands here tonight and that is more than anyone else in the squad which was named by Ronald Koeman, the most capped player in the French squad, of course, is Hugo Lloris. This is his 107th cap for France this evening. Not that he's been in glittering form for Tottenham Hotspur this season, but uh, he's still obvious, the obvious choice between the sticks for France with uh, Steve Mandanda, second choice. It's a throw to the Netherlands in their left-back area, which is taken by... Virgil van Dijk back to his goalkeeper Jasper Sillison and played forward out to the right hand side and Dumfries they do ping the ball about very crisply the Netherlands Bergwijn with a lovely turn and he's allowed to run and he rolls it inside to Blind. central position for Daley Blind here 30 yards from goal out to Ryan Babel on the left he rolls it further inside to De Jong and they've had to go backwards a little bit here so De Ligt comes forward again from that centre-back position and goes out to Denzel Dumfries once more and, uh, these young players for the Netherlands the likes of De Jong and De Ligt they're very very comfortable on the ball and they're not afraid to bring it forward and take players on they're certainly not overawed here by the world champions and it was a close run thing when these sides met at the Stade de France with France winning by two goals to one Balls with uh, Van Dijk, looked like he was pulled back there by Griezmann, the free kick is given. Free kick to Netherlands, about 25 yards back from the halfway line, and the crowd here are saying, look, Griezmann threw that ball away, why isn't he being booked? Absolutely, and I think they've got a, a case for that. Look, at the, the, uh, you mentioned De Ligt and some of the younger players, they've certainly got the, the technical capabilities and they've dominated possession. Uh, I think there's a common influence at the back. Van Dijk brings them that. And, uh, certainly, he's the leader in this team. And they've been able to, to, to really control this game up to now. Blind, who uh, is, is playing left back for the for the Dutch tonight, is playing really, I'd say, halfway into France's half. And that's where he wants to be. He doesn't want to be defending. He wants the ball at his feet. And that's why he's a, a much better player for Holland. So what they're stopping France is their wide players running at their fullbacks. We've seen. One run perhaps from uh, Mbappe, which was brought to a swift end by De Ligt. Otherwise, they've been defending, and they've got more defending to do here. The Dutch coming forward with 20 minutes gone. Dumfries down the right-hand side. Back goes Matuidi to double up on him, so he goes further back to De Jong. And now it's with Van Dijk. He rolls it forward to... Darun down the inside right channel, right footed ball from him. A little layoff, hoping to pick out the run of Bergwijn. Kimpembe has to put it into touch for a throw down the right hand side to the Dutch. It was a good forward run there by Vinaldum in the inside right channel, which forced that emergency action from the Paris Saint Germain defender. And still, it's all Holland here with De Jong out to Daly Blind on the left, lifts it up over the top. His arms up for offside against Babel, but it was headed away anyway by Varane. And uh, it just got a nick off a Dutch player for a throw down the right-hand side for France. And again, they'll just be happy to have a little bit of a spell of possession here. Well, whenever Holland lose the ball, especially on the edge of the, the French penalty area, they, they, they're pressing very quickly and they're trying to win it back very quickly. And they've been successful doing that up to this point. It's... Uh, Kante playing it forward, looking for Mbappe, but he got his pass wrong there. And Golo Kante certainly plays more of the role that we used to see him play for Chelsea before Sarri came in and played him a little bit further forward in midfield. This is a more familiar role for him for France tonight alongside Steven and Zonzi. But they're being dominated in midfield at the moment by the Dutch. Any disappointment for Ronald Koeman will be that it's nil-nil despite all of their possession they have had two chances to take the lead which were both squandered good saves by Lloris on both occasions it's played forward by De Ligt down the right hand side this time it is cut out by Dinia and he gets it forward to Matuidi he crosses the halfway line and finds Giroud 
Little layoff from him to Matuidi, and a good ball down the left-hand side, and could France be in here? Well, they certainly had the opportunity with Mbappe, but he rolled the ball inside, and Van Dijk got it away rather easily. That was just a little glimmer of what France can do in a wide area. Here's Pavard, who uh, scored that wonder goal in the World Cup, didn't he? That was just uh, an astonishing goal against Argentina. Had the pleasure of commentating on that game for Talk Sport. An absolute thriller in Russia. We're just past the midway point of the first half here in Rotterdam. It's Netherlands nil, France nil. A fascinating open game here. All that's missing at the moment is a goal. And it's certainly not for the want of trying as far as the Dutch are concerned. As uh, it's picked up by Varane, it's given away to Wijnaldum. He rolls it inside to Depay, he's offside and misses anyway. But again, good pressure, high up the pitch from the Dutch. Well, I mean, I've been impressed with that uh, aspect of the game. Look, we, we always knew that the, uh, the Dutch can play. You know, they're, they're good technicians. But one of the problems they've had of late is not being aggressive enough and forceful enough in that sort of play, the pressing game. And uh, they're doing it up against France, who can play out. Uh, and they're, they're making a very good job of it. They've, uh, they're pretty impressive up to this point. I just wonder how long it'll be before France get a little frustrated because I haven't seen the, uh, the possession stats, but they're going to be vastly in favour of the Dutch. Hugo Lloris has the ball from the offside against Depay, which was quite correctly given. And he kicks it long, left-footed from just outside his penalty area, up towards Giroud. It's a, a good leap by Dumfries and uh, it's actually a free kick to the Dutch and it's Giroud who's fuming with Anthony Taylor for that decision you look around at the body language of the French players and it's not great at Espe the moment especially Giroud Gary because he's at the point of, uh, of, of the team that tries to win the ball back off the Dutch in the moment he's, he's chasing shadows he's up against the two centre-halves he just passed it back and, and forth Jong is coming deep into his area as well and he stopped actually trying to do that now he's just watching and saying well I'll let him have it there there's no point in pressing him because uh, they just go past him France unbeaten in 14 competitive games since they lost in Sweden in June 2017 that's their only competitive defeat since the European Championships remember they lost to Portugal in that competition but uh, as we said earlier on in the evening, they haven't been tremendously convincing in terms of their performances since the World Cup. They have got the results. But it's uh, the Dutch who are depressing, who are impressing here, should I say, as Darun gets it out to the left-hand side. Bergfein with the layoff to Daly Blind. Blind just rolls it gently inside to De Jong. He goes forward. Again, it's a nice layoff by Darun to Vinaldum. Wijnaldum out to Blint, back to De Jong again, lovely football from the Dutch this. France desperately trying to win it back but failing, Depay goes back to Van Dijk. He goes square to Daroon, up to De Jong, back to Daroon, now on halfway with Van Dijk, pinpoint through ball from him. And it's Varane who eventually wins it back and Kante who tries to bring it forward, he got the ball brilliantly there with that challenge did De Jong. That's why he's so highly rated, because it looked like Golo Kante was away there, but a telescopic leg emerged and won the ball cleanly from behind. Eventually it's played forward straight through to Hugo Lloris. Well, 26 minutes in, uh, nil-nil, uh, but it's uh, the Dutch manager, I think, will be delighted with the approach of his own team. And at this moment in time, although they, they aren't creating lots of chances uh, against France, it's, uh, it's, it's certainly the chance in his team that have to improve. Mbappe tried to clip that ball up, didn't find its intended target, but Matuidi gave chase and kept it in. And it's with Dinia, who uh, goes further back to Nzonzi. He strokes it up to uh, Blaise Matuidi, who turns away and wins the free kick from the backtracking Steven Bergwijn. And France will have a set play high up the pitch for the first time in the game. The problem that the, the, the Dutch have got here, Gary, is that the individuals that France have got, you always know that they're going to have moments. Uh, they've played quite a bit of football like this, not be 
been that impressive in an end up winning game 2 or 3 nil. so we've seen it all before it's about the important moments can you be clinical when them chances drop to you and France have certainly proved over the last four, four to six years that they can so the free kick is wide on the left midway inside the Dutch half over the ball is Antoine Griezmann a couple of yards in from the left touch line and it'll be Griezmann to swing it in it's headed away by Wijnaldum but not too far and it's a good strike from Pavard which uh, I thought might have been saved by the goalkeeper but uh, as it is a goal kick's been given but he certainly got hold of that did Benjamin Pavard yeah it was always rising so he wasn't too far away from finding that top right hand corner he really struck it beautifully but now it's Dumfries coming forward down the right hand side his cross is hacked away by Varane and uh, Dumfries will usher that away for a throw to Holland down the right hand side he takes it himself to Martin Darun. Darun goes back to the centre circle where Van Dijk has it just clips it to Daly Blind he rolls it brilliant ball up to Depay on the edge of the area he just tries to get it through from a prone position he's now back on his feet eventually Varane puts his foot through the ball and Kante gives it away straight to Darun it's poor from France in open play it really is they're not looking after the football Ryan Babel down the left for the Dutch on for Blind on the overlap he gets it forward to Depay they want a flag here and the, he is indeed offside France will be grateful for that they have the ball again I think over the last sort of five minutes is a little bit more intent uh, about what uh, the Dutch are doing they are starting to take the odd risk around the edge of the penalty area which I think you have to do you've earned the right to do that now you're controlling the game uh, and at times the French look a little disconcerted well just coming up to the 30 minute mark in Rotterdam the home of Feyenoord as I mentioned earlier the uh, the plan here is to build an even bigger stadium the capacity at the moment is 51,000 they want to build a brand new stadium holding 63,000 in many ways it would be a shame because this is a, a grand old stadium it's one of uh, one of my favorite venues Giroud has been brought down here for France and uh, Anthony Taylor's given the free kick against Wijnaldum so another chance for the French to put the ball into the penalty area but the free kick is actually only just outside the centre circle and Moran takes it out to the left hand side Dini has made the forward run he guides it down for Mbappe and across goes uh, Dumfries to put it out for a throw to France about 10 yards back from the left hand corner flag a third of the contest on it's uh, Netherlands nil France nil you're listening to Talk Sport 2 League A1 of the UEFA Nations League. Giroud has it for France. Lays it off on the left-hand side for Matuidi. He finds Mbappe. Mbappe cuts back on his right foot and is then dispossessed. He goes over, but there's no foul. And the Dutch look to clear. But they went forward a little too quickly that time. And it was well cut out by N'Golo Kante, who goes back to Kimpembe. His ball forward is won by Darun, but... It was well won back by Giroud, played forward over the top looking for Mbappe. Well cleared by De Ligt, who's been absolutely superb at the back so far for the Netherlands at just 19 years of age. Very impressive, Gary. Uh, you know, he's a lovely balance as well uh, with Van Dijk alongside him, the strength, the leadership qualities he's got. But uh, De Ligt has showed that he's, uh, he's got a turn of pace. He's, uh, he's certainly showed that he's got composure on the ball as well. He, he travels forward with it plays it forward when it when it's on he keeps possession when it's not on to play forward and up to this point he's been really impressive born uh, 12th of August 1999 blimey and this is already his 12th cap for the Netherlands certainly Ronald Koeman has seen something that he likes and you can understand why quite a few Ajax players in the uh, squad and they had an amazing win at the weekend they won 7-1 away to Excelsior in the Eredivisie and they're having a great time of it of course uh, this season Ajax balls at the back with Kimpembe just outside the centre circle goes out to the left hand side and between the back infield to Steven and Zonzi he's barely crossed halfway really he's been very disciplined 
It's Varane who squares it to Presnel Kimpembe again. Up towards the halfway line of Matuidi and he looks to spin and play Indinia down the left. But, uh, the header is by Dumfries who puts it out for a throw, 10 yards past halfway to France. And it remains goalless with 32 minutes gone here on Talk Sport 2. Ball's out on the left-hand side with Luca Dinia for France. Ball in white, the French. Mbappe turns away from Martin Darun. That's a good bit of play from Mbappe. Lays it off for Kante. Down the left-hand side. Chance to get the cross in here, maybe. Matuidi attempted to do so. It was blocked. It's cleared as far as Dinia. He's shown too much of that to Bergwijn. Matuidi, though, doubles up. And tries to dispossess uh, Vijnaldum. It's a throw to France, which is already taken by Luca Dinia, a former Paris Saint-Germain player, forced all the way back to Kimpembe, 10 yards short of the halfway line, down the left-hand side. Netherlands not only passing the ball very nicely, but they've defended really well in this first half. France really have only had that one shot from Pavard and the header from Griezmann which forced the only save that Jasper Sillerson has had to make in this first 45. Just signs now that France are starting to grow into the game a little bit, uh, having better possession certainly, uh, no, not really any penetration of their play, but just growing into the game. Mbappe, left side of the area, Medina to play the cross in, oh what a ball as well, that is right across the face of goal and Daly Blind has to hook it behind and that'll be the very first corner of the game to France. And that's the problem for, for Holland. They played exceptionally well in the first half an hour. But the scoreline is still nil-nil. And France very much in this game. And you would have thought, Gary, they're only going to get better. Yeah, absolutely. Just over ten minutes to the break. And this is the first corner of the game. It goes France's way. And it'll be the left foot of Antoine Griezmann to take it. In swinging ball to the near post, where it's met by Betweedy, puts it back towards the six-yard area. The header down is by Nzonzi, but it's hacked away by the Dutch. It wasn't actually the best corner from uh, Griezmann, but it was met on the near post by Betweedy, who was allowed to turn and put another ball in, which was right on the money. The Dutch get it away with no danger to their goal in the end. But certainly... France are just starting to enjoy more possession now, which will be a worry to the vast ranks of Dutch supporters inside the De Kuyp Stadium. But you have to expect this when you're playing it at this level, especially against world champions, that you know, it doesn't how well you play. They will have good spells, they're a good team. They're winning World Cups for a reason. Mbappe running at uh, the fullback Dumfries, still got the ball on the edge of the area and just tries to play it in for Kante, who's the furthest man upfield there for France, who was just in front of him and goes behind for a goal kick. Again, you know, he hasn't really had too much uh, to talk about in this half up to this point, Mbappe, but he just keeps going. You know, when he when he goes at people, he goes at them with intent. And sometimes he has a little bit of luck, or he's got the extra half a yard that he can bring into action, and you know he can finish. And then you can see what he was trying there, Gary. Yeah, it was just over hit, wasn't it? Uh, maybe he wasn't on the same wavelength, Kante, but uh, certainly uh, it was the right thing for him to do. Talked about the possession earlier, Alvin, 66% to the Netherlands so far. Bergwijn has it, goes out to Depay, thinks he was kicked there, Depay. Anthony Taylor saw nothing wrong with that and plays on. France almost obligingly give it away. And it's back with Jasper Sillerton with Depay still down with his face buried in the turf, clutching his ankle. And now Anthony Taylor says he can get some treatment but he certainly didn't see a foul but I, uh, I'd like to see this again because it, it did look a little theatrical I've got to say uh, there's a replay coming on now and we'll, we'll have a look yeah it didn't seem to be too much there and you can see why Anthony Taylor has, has waved play on maybe you no know, he's, he's caught him on the top of the foot okay so right uh, that was something that maybe I didn't see in the first uh, the first bit so uh, Anthony Taylor although he's a lot closer than I was um, didn't see it either but I don't think it was intentional but there was certainly uh, coming together and as he's actually gone for the ball the defender he's, he's, he's caught the top of, uh, of, of his foot it should have been a foul and of course as we know a football boot has got so little protection on the top these days that that will be a painful one 
But uh, having got him on the top of the foot, he then cleared the ball, and I think that's what Anthony Taylor saw. I think it's because he was a little theatrical and throwing yeah. his arms up and then going down, Gary. And that, that can lead you to believe that, you know, he's trying to kid you. I don't think he was then, but he didn't have to be as theatrical as he was the pipe. Well, that is Memphis to buy a little bit, isn't it? He's 24 now, having a really good uh, season with Lyon. Scored twice away to Gangon at the weekend, a 4-2 Lyon victory. To take his tally for the season to six. He's got 22 last season for Lyon, which is why he's one of the main men of this uh, Dutch side. De Ligt. It looks like he's going to be one of the main men for many years to come uh, on this evidence. It's with Van Dijk back to his centre-back partner, De Ligt, just outside the centre circle. Finds De Jong back to the 19-year-old again and he rolls it square for Van Dijk. Now Martin De Roon, De Roon should I say, who plays in uh, Italy with Atalanta these days after getting relegated with Middlesbrough a couple of years ago. Van Dijk just outside the centre circle. Forward to De Roon again, right for the ball from him. Up to Depay, perfect layoff to Dumfries down the right. Cross is deflected by Naldem's header. Goalwards, it's a difficult one for Genie Van Alden. Just trying to loop the header over Hugo Lloris and it goes over the crossbar for a goal kick. I think what they've got to be a little careful of uh, Koeman in, in, in Holland in trying to find their way back to the, the very top of international football is that they don't play tippy-tappy football. They don't just keep the ball for the sake of keeping the ball. There's got to be an end product. There has to be a time when you've kept the ball, you've, you've, you've made the, the opposition chase, but you are looking forward. You're getting it into the right areas. For example, around the edge of the box. And once it goes in there, people do try flicking balls around the corner then you commit people to join the, 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 the front players that, that the balls be played into so it's getting that right as well as the possession temperature only two degrees celsius in rotterdam and falling all the time with clear skies foggy in the netherlands tonight just over five minutes to half time netherlands nil france nil in the uefa nations league you're listening to talk sport two Despite the lack of goals, it's certainly been a very exciting first half with plenty of opportunities. So far, no one able to break this deadlock. As Sillison clips it right-footed out to that right-hand side. And a push in the back on Dumfries by Luca Dinia. Means a free kick to the Netherlands in their right back area. Well, one thing is for sure, they, they, they come out to play, haven't they? The Dutch, they've really come out to play. I mean, there's times here when they're, they're being forced back a little for the first time in the game. Uh, and Sillison, the goalkeeper, is, uh, is receiving balls and is playing as an extra man inside his own penalty area. And they're not being hurried. The, the French are trying to press the ball and they've shown great courage to Dutch in, in terms of keeping hold of it, keeping possession. Very much 4-3-3 that uh, France are playing the same formation as the Dutch with Griezmann on the right, Giroud in the middle and Mbappe on the left. We haven't really seen too much of those wide players so far from France. It's a throw to the Netherlands which is taken by Blint, played back to Van Dijk just outside the centre circle with France very deep here. No one is past the bottom of the centre circle for France. Blint has it again. 41 minutes on the watch. Back to Van Dijk, right for the ball, going cross field out to the right hand side of Dumfries. Good header by Luca Dinia, and he's fine. Found the Tweedy, who gets it in field to Angolo Kante, and he rolls a right for the ball down the right hand side. Just didn't quite get his angle right there, and the backtracking battle was able to get there ahead of Pavard and put it out for a throw. And he worked really hard there, Gary. That's the one difference I can see in uh, these Dutch team, this Dutch team tonight, to, to what hasn't been there over the, the last sort of couple of years. When they lose the ball, they're certainly a hard working side. They work hard for each other. They win it back, and of course, that, that allows them to dominate. And uh, if you don't do that against a team like France, it's so easy to concede on the counter. One area where Ronald Koeman has struggled to be consistent is with the clean sheets. Just one clean sheet in the last six. That, of course, came in the win uh, over Germany. 
but they've conceded in the other five but so far here they've defended very resolutely against this potent French attack and they've conceded very few opportunities to the world champions it's nil nil in Rotterdam and Depay has it wide on the right tries to bend it in towards Babel oh that was completely missed by Varane comes out to Blint he rolls it back towards the edge of the penalty area and uh, Steven Bergvine back to Blind again, tries the cross, cut out by Pavard and it's just a throw by the corner flag. Well, Van was doing there, I don't know if he took his eye off the ball or whatever, but uh, it was a ball whipped in from the, the Dutch right and he thought he was going to clear it and he didn't get anywhere near it. I think it took the, the Dutch strikers in the vicinity by surprise, they didn't really have time to react. Well, it's uh, Blind again. Back to De Jong, forward to Blind, left side of the penalty area with two minutes to half time here in Rotterdam. De Jong has it, right for the ball, towards the penalty spot. Oh, missed by Kimpembe, chance for Babel, brilliant save, and then smashed it on the rebound. It's Genie by Naldem, and the Netherlands take the lead. The pressure finally pays against the world champions. The first chance was for Babel. It was a stunning stop by Hugo Lloris with his legs, but it fell to Wijnaldum who had a great chance in the first couple of minutes that was saved by Lloris this one no chance at all for the Tottenham goalkeeper Wijnaldum smashes in his 10th international goal and it's the Netherlands 1 France 0 well fully deserved opener for the Dutch it was a ball that played into the danger zone they didn't particularly de defend it well France and after that first save as you said from Lloris he was unfortunate with the ball then come down to Wijnaldum who makes no mistake whatsoever but a fully deserved saved up and goal for the Dutch. Well, Babel surely couldn't believe he hadn't scored, but the ricochet off the leg of Lloris smashed him by Wijnaldum and a massive punch of the air with sheer joy from Ronald Koeman on the sidelines. What a great time to score as well. Just before half-time in the 44th minute of the game and the world champions are behind and that keeps this group alive. Remember the Netherlands have to win tonight and away to Germany in three days time to topple the world champions and qualify themselves for the semi-finals of the UEFA Nations League next summer. And that's very much on at the moment. France need a response here. They need a draw, France, to ensure that they themselves finish top of this group. Of course, this would mean Germany would be relegated to League B if it stays like this. But here's Pavard, long way to go, up to the chest of Giroud, laid off to Griezmann. He can't kick the ball and it's just calmly chipped clear by the Dutch. That's been very much the order of the day from Ronald Koeman's side. There's been no panicky hoofs downfield. They've always looked to play the ball. And here's Depay, he's having a really good match. Past Kante, gets it back again and then uh, it is slammed out of play for a throw to the Dutch down the left-hand side as we move into one minute of stoppage time. I think as well, one of the, uh, the things that's caught my eye, that whenever the Dutch are, are playing you know, the, the longer ball after they've had to defend against the French break, up to a front man, the front man has held the ball up or he, he's kept the, the ball in play and, and, and they've looked threatening in terms of that as well. So there isn't anything about their play in this first half that you can be too critical of. Well, there is the half-time whistle and a huge roar around uh, Feyenoord Stadium as the Netherlands go in with the one goal advantage a mistake at the back by Steven and Zonzi who had the chance to clear instead he flicked it on for Ryan Babel whose shot was brilliantly saved by Lloris Jeannie Wijnaldum who'd earlier had a chance well saved wasn't going to miss that one we've seen very little from France really their best chance a header from Antoine Griezmann which was fairly comfortably saved by Jasper Sillison but no doubt about it the better side lead here at the break in Rotterdam it's Netherlands 1 world champions France nil welcome back where it's the Netherlands leading France by a goal to nil here a reminder that the last 14 games that the Netherlands have played here in Rotterdam have produced 14 wins with 37 scored and just three conceded and they're looking to make it 15 out of 15 with this half-time scoreline their last match here was uh, last summer June 
2017. They put five past Luxembourg. Of course, they're facing very different opposition here, but they are looking to make it seven wins from eight home games because they don't just play here in Rotterdam. They are in tremendous form. But what you would say is that surely France can't be that bad again in the second half. They will have to show us a lot more than that pretty feeble offering they served up in the first 45. But let's give all the credit to Netherlands because they didn't let France settle right from the first whistle. And perhaps Didier Deschamps will be relatively happy that it is only 1-0 to Holland. It's still wide open. It's uh, going to be France to get us underway. All in white. They will be attacking the goal away to our left-hand side here in Rotterdam in the second half. Griezmann and Giroud over the ball, waiting for Anthony Taylor's whistle. There it is. And we're underway on TalkSport 2 in the second half with the Dutch leading the French by one goal to nil. If it stays like that, it means it will go to the final match in the group on uh, Sunday, isn't it? Or is it Monday? It's Sunday against uh, Germany. Germany against the Netherlands. And that will decide everything in the group. At the moment, France are at risk of not reaching the semi-finals of the inaugural UEFA Nations League. Although they are still in pole position in the group. This is their last game. They need to get a point to be absolutely sure. Otherwise, it's out of their hands going into that final match. Netherlands in possession. Down the left-hand side with Blind up to Depay. Little layoff to Ryan Babel, who will probably feel he should have scored in that first half. Fortunately for him, the rebound was stuck in by Vinaldum of Liverpool. The ball's been switched to Dumfries down the right-hand side. It goes in field to the goal scorer, Vinaldum. Tenth international goal for him on his 52nd appearance for the Netherlands. And it's out on that left-hand side now with Blint. Played inside to Derone, all the way back to the goalkeeper, Jasper Sillison. Just, uh, as I mentioned, one appearance for him this season in the Copa del Rey. Same as the last two seasons, really. Still the main man for his country. Free kick here to the Netherlands, a foul by Nzonzi on Vijnaldum. It's uh, already been taken short. Back to Virgil van Dijk. He goes up to De Jong, whose cross into the box actually made the goal. Very impressive display from him in the first half. I don't think he's given the ball away yet. <laughs> Nobody's touched the ball more than him, that is for sure, on the whole pitch. Very composed in possession. That's been a feature of Holland throughout the 11, really. No more so than De Ligt here, who's played it back to... Jasper Sillison, he calmly plays it through the centre to Derone and out to Van Dijk. Further out to that left-hand side and Blint. No real sense that France are looking to put too much pressure on the uh, Dutch defence as they calmly play it out. De Jong. Well, they, they are trying, Gary, but I've got to give credit to the Dutch here. Uh, the, the, the keeper's coming in and he's playing balls like, you know, that outfield players would be pleased with. Babel inside to uh, Steven Bergwijn, whose layoff just didn't quite have enough on it. And it's played up to Giroud, who lays it off down the left. The ball played forward. was looking for the uh, forward run of Mbappe, but it was an optimistic ball, really. Easily cleared by Denzel Dumfries and it got a nick on its way through so it'll be a throw to Ronald Koeman's side down the right hand side and it'll be Dumfries to take earning only his third cap for Holland at the age of 22 gets it back from Memphis Depay and plays it down the right hand side for Bergwijn he's been challenged by Kapembe and that'll be a, th uh, a free kick actually to France in their left back area which will be taken by Kimpembe up to Nzonzi who 
played his part unwittingly in the goal. A bit of miscommunication between uh, him and Varane, I think, wasn't it, Alvin? Yes, it was. Yeah. I think the French have probably, uh, you know, had a, a little goal at, at half time, and they've come out the second half and tried to press. The problem you've got is when a team is re really well coached in expecting you to press and play their way out when you do press, it can be disconcerting for you and um, they've tried to press a couple of times and the Dutch have got out and what that does it, 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 it gives you a lack of confidence in your press so people start to be a little hesitant in actually pressing then and then you can't do that you've either got to press or sit uh, once you actually set, send one or two people pressing and the third one or fourth one doesn't go in then your whole team is unhinged and it doesn't work so that looks like they, where they are at the moment the French they've tried to, to come out and press the Dutch have probably expected them to do that and have been good enough to get out. Well, it was the Dutch that pressed there through De Jong and Kante fouled him and got the yellow card, so the free kick's been taken and Babel tries to get the shot away. They got a deflection as it uh, loops over the crossbar and Holland will have their very first corner. I haven't seen too much of Babel. I think the has been the more involved uh, forward, uh, but certainly he's got the individual skill to be able to do something on the ball and uh, you know, that it, they need now to add something to the team play which is individualism you know one of these like one of these lads pulling a moment of individual brilliance out of out of the pot you know to make it 2-0 and then you start to feel a bit more comfortable 50 minutes gone the Dutch have their first corner Depay whips it into that near post area where uh, Van Dijk was waiting I think he did get his foot to the ball but could only stab it behind for a goal kick I must admit, sometimes I see the size of Van Dijk and the physical presence, I think, well, you know, instead of whipping that in there, why don't you just hang it up and let him go and attack it? Because it's, it's very difficult for him to, to, you know, you've got to have a little bit of luck trying to get into a position where you get across somebody there, but when you look at the size of him and the way he attacks the ball, I certainly used to feel like, like that when, a, when you know, somebody was taking a, a corner, just keep it away from the keeper, put it around the penalty spot and we'll have a go at it. The ball actually curled out before Van Dijk could get his foot to the ball. It's the fourth time, by the way, Van Dijk has played against France. He's lost all of the previous three. But his Dutch side here leading by a goal to nil on TalkSport 2. Thanks to Ginny Wijnaldum in the 44th minute here in Rotterdam. I think whatever happens, whatever the scoreline at the end of this game, I think that Ronald Koeman, after 50 minutes, certainly will be thinking... You know, we're going to take a lot of positives from this game. We've uh, gone in, we've outplayed the, the world champions in every aspect of the game in the first 50 minutes. Can they keep it going for 90? Well, they've won the ball back again and Bergvine tries to clip it up to Babel. It's cleared straight back to Steven Bergvine. Having missed the last two tournaments, the Euros and the World Cup, they would certainly grace a major tournament if they're playing like this. Ronald Koeman certainly got them going again after... Uh, Far too long in the international wilderness. So Vinaldum on the left-hand side of the penalty area in a very congested area of the field actually. Gets it back to De Jong, further back to Van Dijk and square to Darun at the top of the centre circle. He clips a right-footed ball up towards the left-hand side of the box. Well taken on the chest trap by Vinaldum. He's now got it on his right boot. Forced back though to Van Dijk. Forward to De Jong on the left flank. Gets the return ball from Wijnaldum again. Dutch looking to engineer an opening here. France holding firm. Now they push up and the ball is played back to Jasper Sillison inside his own penalty area. I've got to say, I'm going to start watching, uh, well I've been watching him all night, I've uh, been really impressed with De Jong. Uh, I think uh, two of the, uh, the, the, the Dutch players have really caught the eye, De Jong, um, De Jong, uh, sorry, De Jong and, uh, and, and De Ligt. But I don't think he's, I honestly don't think he's given a ball away. I'm going to keep my eye on him, Gary, because I, I don't believe he can go through a whole game. Because I'm not just talking about somebody who's getting the ball with nobody around him. He's got space on the ball at the moment. Uh, but he's had the ball in really confined areas and still has kept possession for the Dutch. He's just keeping them ticking constantly. As uh, he gets it out to the left, Vinaldum. Can he get the cross in here? Well, the challenge was from Angolo Kante. He wants a free kick. Chelsea man gives the ball back to the goalkeeper and uh, Anthony Taylor agrees it's just a goal kick. Yeah, I think two people going for the ball. Yeah, I suppose I've seen them giving and I've seen them not giving as, uh, as that was the case. France trying to play it out. Depay putting the pressure on and Lloris 
clips it out to the left where Dinia manages to get something on the ball but they're struggling to clear here they have managed it with uh, Matuidi but that's given away to Dumfries that tells you everything about the two teams really one side playing the ball out from the back with ease the other under tremendous pressure when they try to do the same as De Ligt gets it forward to Darun back to the teenager De Ligt again a strong back pass to Sillison can't mess around with that and he's cleared it straight to Mbappe whose header is poor and he's let Holland off the hook there and now it's Blind down the left hand side for the Netherlands who lead here by goal to nil he's got it up to Babel left hand side of the box turns away from Kimpembe still Babel on his right foot who uh, tries to get the ball in it comes off Kimpembe for a throw which Babel's already taken to De Jong Beyond with a right footed ball up to Depay. Depay tries to turn and is surely dragged back by Dinia. And the free kick will be given about 28 yards from goal, just right of centre. Well, how on earth he has not given a free kick there, uh, sorry, a, a, a book in there to Dinia, I do not know. It's a, it's a foul, it's, it's in a dangerous area. If he is allowed to turn there, Depay, he can actually play somebody in. And when you think about him getting the card out uh, early on in this game for Van Aldrin, it, you know, it's, it's a crazy decision. What he's thinking of, I don't know. No yellow card, but France could be punished from the free kick. It's really good play by Depay, using his upper body strength to shield the ball, and Dinia had no choice but to drag him down. And Depay is over the ball. Be a brave man to go for goal from here, because the wall is a good three yards outside the box. So you'd think he might clip this up to the far post where the likes of Van Dijk and Co are waiting. Or has Depay got his eye on goal here? He slid it in beautifully towards uh, Babel. He wasn't able to get the shot away, but it was uh, nicely worked by the Dutch. Don't think anyone was expecting that. And unfortunately for Babel, he couldn't get the ball out of his feet. It was, uh, it was ingenious, really, wasn't it? Because I think it caught the French by surprise. Unfortunately, as you said, Babel really couldn't sort his feet out there. But it was certainly... Uh, you know, it, was, it was another moment where you can see they're being coached. They're very well drilled when they've got the ball, when they haven't got the ball, from set pieces. It's been a pretty complete performance up to this point. De Ligt for the Dutch. A good ball along the deck to Depay. He's played it out to the right-hand side and Dumfries who takes on Dinia and he's passed him into the box now. Dumfries needs to cross. Coming back was Matuidi who needed to get something on that and did. He's put it out of play though. Throw to the Netherlands who are passing the ball quite beautifully here. I've got to say, Guy, if you said to me uh, and you didn't know uh, which team were the uh, world champions, <laughs> you'd probably say it was going to be the Dutch because that's the way they've performed tonight. They've been far superior. Now, Dinia is going to get yellow carded this time for a, a really poor challenge. And had he been correctly booked a few moments ago, that could have been a second yellow. Yep, absolutely. I think in, in that respect, it's not been a difficult game to, to officiate at. And I think he's, uh, he's made a couple of mistakes already, hasn't he, Taylor? Well, that was a shocking challenge, really, on Dumfries, quite high. And Anthony Taylor had no choice there but to produce the yellow card, the third booking of the evening. Dumfries certainly felt the full force of that one. And uh, it'll be a free kick on the right-hand side of the penalty area. And it'll be very inter interesting to see which manager blinks first when it comes to making a change. With the Netherlands leading by a goal to nil, the hour mark rapidly approaching and France showing no signs really of getting themselves back into this be very interesting to see where the first change comes from Dumfries is back on his feet which is good to see and he'll be okay to continue and we have 58 minutes on the watch well, you would have thought, Gary, if, uh, if either manager was thinking about making the change, it would probably be Deschamps. When you think about it, his team isn't functioning. No. Ronald Koeman's team is functioning. Ah, stop, stop. So, great position here for Depay. Right side of the penalty area. Almost level with the edge of the French 18-yard area. There's a lot of uh, bodies in the penalty area here. 
It'll be whipped in, right-footed by Memphis Depay, near post, and it came off Giroud, who wasn't sure of his bearings at all. And it actually comes off the inside of his boot and behind for a corner. There's a lot of movement in there. They've obviously done a lot of work on these. I can see as well there uh, is Babylon actually blocking somebody. They all know what they're doing in this. So, second corner for the Dutch. Outswinger from Memphis Depay. Oh, and it's Van Dijk with the header over the crossbar. Who rose and got a clean header on it but just couldn't keep it down yeah I think it was slightly too high from here he really jumped well um, nearly a free header wasn't it but that's the sort of ball I was talking about Gary one that you just put in there into the danger zone and, and allow him to, to, to battle for the free header which he did there two goals in 22 caps for Virgil van Dijk the captain of the Netherlands side still lead by a goal to nil and uh, we are just 30 seconds away from the hour mark in Rotterdam. Through the middle goes Depay to Bergstein, out to the left-hand side. It's Babel now into the penalty area. It's cleared. Oh, shoveled away by Kimpembe. Out for a throw to the Dutch down the left-hand side. They're showing a lot of uh, penetration high up the pitch here, the Netherlands. I'm sure they're bitterly disappointed that it's only 1-0 and that France is still very much in this game. Blind has pinched it from Varane, who is dawdling. Gets it into Wijnaldum, who can't get the shot away. It's uh, pretty lame stuff from the world champions, this. They're not at the races at all, defensively or in attack. Here's Blind getting it into Wijnaldum again. And I think he was offside there as Blind played it forward. And a sigh of relief for the French supporters inside this stadium. They have a free kick inside their own box. Well, half an hour to go, and they've, they've certainly got a, you know, they've got, they've got off with more than what they have. They haven't have caused a problem for, for the Dutch. It's the Dutch who have come into the second half and have just picked up where they left off. I would say this is actually a better performance from Holland than we saw against Germany when it was 3 0. Of course, it was only 1 0 until the 87th minute in that game in Amsterdam. I'd say they've dominated this game more than they did against Germany. Ronald Koeman will be absolutely delighted with that. Of course, what he wants more than anything is the three points. And he's far from certain of getting those at the moment. Kimpembe launches it, and that's a terrible pass straight through to Jasper Silicon. Well, another sign of the way the, the psychology in the game is that they're playing long, hopeful, punting balls up front now, the French. They, you know, there's, there's no real coordination. They've got Griezmann and Mbappe on the pitch, and they've, they've got to be better in working the ball to those players. Here's uh, Depay, left-hand side, oh, lovely skill, looking for Blind, and Blind has skipped away from Pavard, who committed himself, and there's the cross, looking for Dumfries with the header, on target, saved, Dumfries again, saved again by Lloris, oh, a huge chance for the Netherlands, it's the right-back Denzel Dumfries, first with his head, then with his right boot, and Lloris saved both of them. Well, brilliant play by Depay, really was individual brilliance, had set it, Danny Blind up on the, uh, Danny Blind up on that uh, left-hand side, and he's got the, uh, I think the intelligence to get his head up at the vital time and pick the right ball out, that's exactly what he did, he just thinks it up to the far post, it was a great header, wasn't it, by Don Fries, and uh, another good save by Larissa, who beat by far the busiest goalkeeper. Still only 1-0 despite all of this Dutch dominance. Corner number three for the Dutch, taken by Depay, all the way through. Two players got in each other's way there, and the shot is comfortably saved in the end from the edge of the penalty area. Babel testing Hugo Lloris, who's had an awful lot of work to do tonight to keep France in this game. Including a double save, we're watching a replay of that now. Pushed away by Lloris, not very convincingly, and then Dumfries couldn't resist having a crack the second time from quite a tight angle. Still that second goal deserves them, yeah, and, and Koeman must be really pleased with the performance up to now, but he also must, in the back of his head, think, this is the world champions. We're 1-0 up, we played exceptionally well, 63 minutes on the clock. There's no way that they're not going to get a chance or, or create a chance with the individuals that they've got, surely. Including Mbappe. It goes back to Nzonzi on the halfway line. Nzonzi further back to Kimpembe and out on this left-hand side for Dinia. Dinia pursued by Bergwijn and they've doubled up Bergwijn and Dumfries. And not only have they doubled up, they've hit it against Dinia and they get the throw. This is togetherness in the performance, isn't it? You've just seen it there. 
two players working tremendously hard one defender one forward player both in tandem uh, high fives because they know they've done the job together and that's been a facet of the Dutch play all night we've we've seen great technicians we've seen wonderful uh, football philosophy from the Dutch the togetherness has not always been there but uh, Koeman looks like he's got a team spirit forming here as well and see Taylor is forcing Dumfries back because he's tried to gain five or ten yards there from the throw it's volleyed forward by Depay headed away by Varane it looks like Didier Deschamps is going to make a double change here including uh, I'm just seeing who's coming on Usman Dembele and Musa Sissoko by the looks of things 6 and 11 so Musa Sissoko of Tottenham comes on for his 54th cap he replaces Matuidi who's been very ineffective and uh, Olivier Giroud who's had absolutely no service at all is replaced by Ousmane Dembele who wasn't involved at all for Barcelona at the weekend against Real Betis so he's got no excuse for not being fresh as a daisy he comes on for his 21st cap and that's a decisive double switch from Didier Deschamps who can't be at all impressed with uh, what he's seeing here from his side very much the sort of performance we saw early on in the World Cup rather than in the latter stages. I've got to say, uh, you know, in the last 25 minutes they, they end up getting the goal and uh, getting the draw, or even winning the game. You know, the shops is going to look at this performance and think we are very fortunate for it only to be 1 0 at 65 minutes because uh, if, if it had been 2 or 3, he could have had no complaints. Good throw out by uh, Lloris, but was looking for his club mate Sissoko and just eventually dribbled out of play for a throw to the Dutch which they have already taken and it's with De Jong we don't think he's given the ball away once yet he's played the back pass there to Jasper Sillison who kicks it long right footed out to the left hand side headed infield by Blind picked up by Darun gets it out towards Blind and it's Sissoko who's hustling and harrying and gets there just ahead of Wijnaldum to get it back to Benjamin Pavard oh that's a giveaway though a really bad mistake by Varane it's uh, crosses played in headed away by Kimpembe needed to be De Jong finds Depay back to De Jong again about 40 yards from goal here after that uh, really bad mistake by Real Madrid's Rafael Varane hasn't had a good night at all Dumfries gets it down the right hand side he's got it into Bergwijn his cross is charged down by Kimpembe but it'll be another Dutch corner well I don't want to keep repeating myself but this is so impressive by Holland it really is look, look at that ball from Dumfries it's, you know it's, it's it's got possession based football it's got penetration it's got individualism it's been really impressive possession with progression as Arsene Wenger used to say fourth corner for the home side who lead here by a goal to nil and doesn't really tell the story Depay takes a corner it's a poor one he's tried to drill that along the deck but he uh, didn't get past the first defender and could they be punished here as Dembele gets his first touch tries to find Mbappe and Blin just gleefully hoiks that into touch and gets good distance on it as well Depay apologises for the corner because he's put in some good deliveries but that was not one but he's enjoying his football he's playing with confidence uh, when the ball comes up to him now his first touch has always been excellent a lovely flick that got uh, uh, blind away about five minutes ago so, and he's got that in him the, the unknown quantity which every team needs you're listening to talk sport 2 live UEFA Nations League football League A1 it's Netherlands 1 France 0 midway through the second half if it stays like this and Netherlands still have a chance of topping the group Dembele couldn't keep the ball in play down the left really another player who's caught the eye Denzel Dumfries might not be a name that you're too familiar with although he's a regular for uh, PSV but not much has got past him no he's shown that he can defend and he's shown that he, uh, he can get forward he just played a lovely way to pass down the right hand side didn't he uh, you know for Depay and, and it, it was a ball that had to be perfectly weighted so yeah he's he, he's caught the eye I mean look everybody who's got the they, 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 they just shares on tonight I think there's been seven out of ten there's been maybe a, a few there eights and certainly nines as well 
I certainly can't see a player that hasn't played well for him tonight. Which is why there hasn't been any changes so far from Ronald Koeman. He's very happy with what he's seen. Even Danny Blindu, I'm not a, sorry, Danny Blindu, I'm not a, a big fan of Gary defensively. I think he's a good footballer. He's, he's been impressive, but most of the time it's been in an attacking sense for him because they've, they've dominated so well. It's Sissoko, right hand side for France. It's uh, forced backwards to Varane, flips it down that right flank and straight out of play. And cheers from the Dutch supporters as another French attack dwindles to nothing. And it's behind, which uh, means a goal kick, which Jasper Sillison would take with 69 minutes on the clock on a chilly night in Rotterdam. A full house inside the De Kuyp Stadium. Netherlands 1, France nil on TalkSport 2. Lovely back heel by Mbappe. And here goes Kante through the middle. He's played it out to Dembele, who gets the cross in. Headed away by De Jong. And even his header finds an orange shirt by Nelda who's fouled by Nzonzi, that's incredibly clumsy from him and uh, just as you thought France might mount a mean, meaningful attack there the Netherlands win the free kick yeah initially it was a mistake by the goalkeepers a poor clearance to put them in uh, in possession there France in a dangerous area but I was uh, quite impressed again with the way that uh, the Dutch sensed that there was danger there and they all got back and defended and, and picked the second ball up 20 minutes to go. Young's just giving a ball away. <laughs> ah, there we go. It does happen. And, uh, there's also going to be a free kick. I think that was a foul by Blind on... Uh, or was it De Jong, actually, who has committed the foul on and Zonzi? It's taken 70 minutes, to be fair, Alvi. <laughs> we'll forgive him that one. I wasn't going to let him away with it, though, Gary. It's very rare any player will go through uh, an entire match with a 100% pass completion rate, particularly when they're operating a lot of the time half the pitch it's N'Golo Kante with a crossfield ball he's found Dinia he's got it inside looking for Dembele smashed away by the Dutch and it's at the back with Presnel Kimpembe for France square for Varane out to the right hand side they've got to improve here France surely they will as we move into the last 20 minutes as much as uh, it's easy to criticise France, all the credit really has to go to the Dutch for the way they've approached the game and really just snuffed out any French threat. More good defending from Dumfries and he's got a good ball there up to Bergwijn as well. He's found Depay on the edge of the area and the yellow card is coming out here for uh, Pavard for that challenge on Depay right on the edge of the penalty area high quality football again though really is in pressure situations the intricate pass and the technique they're showing to hold on to the ball it was excellent they've all got awareness of what's around them and this is a half dangerous area this uh, you know for, for for the Dutch team it's, uh, it's certainly doable well again brilliant from Memphis Depay a lovely little body swerve to take himself away from Pavard who just refused to allow him to pass and bundled him to the ground now what a position here for the Dutch Depay's put the ball down it is right on the line of the D just left of centre so a real chance to test Hugo Lloris here and it'll surely be Depay to take it himself Daly blind over the ball as well. It is going to be Depay. Right footed. Great save by Larice. Low to his left. He got it around the wall. But the French captain denied Depay a goal. This is a good save, Gary. It really is. It's an awkward save because it bounces right in front of him. He has to judge the bounce as well. It's got power on it. But for Larice, this could have been three or four. Yeah. Really good performance from Larice so far. Fifth corner for the Netherlands 73 minutes gone Depay takes again it's hacked away by the very first defender on the near post which will be a huge frustration to him they're looking for a flag here and there it is against Vijnaldum who shoots goalwards on the turn but it went over the bar anyway and he was offside dangerous uh, dangerous time in the game now for the Dutch because they've been magnificent but coming up to the last 15 minutes as we are now it's when you start to defend the one nil lead you start to maybe sit a little bit deeper are they going to look for a second goal are they going to keep squeezing or are they going to look at maybe trying to see the game out now 
There goes Dinia. He's got the ball inside. Van Dijk. Oh, that's not a good header. Griezmann's there. Stabs it goalwards. And it's straight at Sillison. Oh, it's a good chance. It just wouldn't quite fall the way he wanted. A little bit of the bear camp about that, wasn't it? I mean, he just flicked the ball and turned at the same time. At the other end, it's Bergvine, who rolls it square for Memphis Depay, edge of the penalty area, on his left foot, shoots! Great save by Larice again! On his near post, turns it behind for a corner, and Depay and Larice are having something of a personal duel here. France have been outclassed, absolutely outclassed. Well, the amazing thing is it's only 1-0. That was Van Dijk, you've seen a replay, it was, I thought Griezmann had flicked that ball round, it wasn't, it was Van Dijk who got a touch on it and used his strength then to ease Griezmann out of the way. Sixth corner for the Dutch, taken short by Depay this time, and he gets it back from Wijnaldum, and shoots! Oh, it's another save from Lloris! He really caught that sweetly Memphis Depay, and Lloris one-handed, parried it away, and it's still only 1-0. How on earth? France only 1-0 down. It's crazy. The is uh, we're talking about people who performed tonight, certainly for, for France, he's an 8 out of 10. Oh, really well worked corner, but France were completely caught sleeping. A quick 1-2 from a short corner, 2v1. That should never happen at this level. And once it happened, he had a clear shot at goal. 15 minutes to play. Netherlands 1, France 0. It's been a, a miserable night, really, for the world champions. And yet, they're still in the game, and they can still secure top spot in the group if they can get a goal. Quarter of an hour left here on Talk Sport 2. Well, it's been a gripping night in the UEFA Nations League in Rotterdam. I think the only se sense of anxiety amongst the home support here is that the game isn't over, and it really should be. France have the throw, about 10 yards short of halfway, which Dinia takes, back to Kimpembe, and he goes back to the French captain Hugo Lloris, who has kept his side in the game, single-handedly, that's no exaggeration, some really good saves. Kante now, down the right, has Sissoko on the outside, he's still going and got Kante, now he goes out to Sissoko, He's got to the byline, got the cross in, and it's a catch for Jasper Sillerton, and a fairly comfortable one at that. Again, you know, the Dutch have, have done enough to, to get people around the ball, and, and defensively, attacking-wise, offensively, they, they've got everything right tonight, but I cannot believe, with the individuals that France have got, still got out there, that they're not going to create a chance, a, a good chance between now and the end of the game. Back pass by Kimpembe, all the way back to Lloris, Continues to tick on, 76 and a half minutes gone. Just that one goal separating the sides. Scored by Vinaldum just before half time. Numerous saves by Hugo Lloris since, but they are nothing if not resilient, France. As Pavard gets it out to Sissoko, hugging that right hand touchline. Now he just drifts in field a little bit and goes back to N'Golo Kante. Out to Pavard, he's found Sissoko with a really good ball, pulls it back towards Griezmann, and the interception by Daly Blin, who puts it behind for a corner. Well, they are at least asking more questions now of the Dutch rear, uh, the, you know, the back line, and they have got in behind, that's a good retrieval uh, by Blin, but uh, they are looking, especially down there right now, uh, a lot more effective French. Second corner for France, Griezmann with it. Rather awkward header away onside the six-yard box and then the volley from Dembele is well, well wide of the far post and that'll be a goal kick. At least, uh, as you say, they are asking one or two questions. That was a decent corner in from Griezmann and a really awkward header for... Uh, was it Darun who headed that away? Either way, it was straight to Dembele yeah. and uh, he just couldn't control the shot. A man who's only got two goals in 20 caps for France. Not the sort of strike rate he would hope for, given his status. 12 minutes to play. It's Depay down the right for the Dutch. He's been top class tonight. Depay showing some wonderful moments of individual brilliance. That's a giveaway from De Rhone. And France have it back with Varane. And the heart of the 
French back line away to our right hand side sees nothing on so goes back to Hugo Lloris and he plays it short to Kimpembe forward to Nzonzi Serie A, of course, with Roma. Back to Kimpembe of Paris Saint-Germain. A third and final change looming for France by the looks of things. More on that in a moment because Kante plays it forward down the left for Luca Digne. Gets it inside to Dembele. Laid off for Kante. 35 yards from goal. Forced back to Nzonzi. Nzonzi out to the right and Pavard. A little layoff to Moussa Sissoko. Back to Pavard again. Now back to Kante, possibly the longest spell of possession we've seen from France in the whole of the second half. And it breaks down as Kante gives it away. And Depay launches the counter-attack. Lifted up over the top. Oh, it's a chance for Bergwijn here on his right boot. Can he get the shot away? No. He goes back to De Jong. Out to the left-hand side. And Babel. And Babel has managed to get that ball into Blind. He's pulled it back to Depay. Again, he can't get the shot away. France back in numbers now. And the momentum of that break has rather broken down. But De Jong lifts up a beautiful ball for Depay. Depay faced by Varane. Pulls it back. Chance to buy Nelden. His shot is straight to Nzonti who makes the block. And still that second Dutch goal won't come. And now they can break the French. No, the ball doesn't reach Mbappe. It's smashed out of play. And France are going to bring on Alassane Player of Borussia. No, they're going to bring Ndombele on, I beg your pardon. They're going to bring Tongi Ndombele of Lyon on the 21-year-old uh, midfielder. He's going to replace Steven and Zonzi. And it's only his third cap. And France still trailed by a goal to nil with nine and a half minutes left. Well, the Dutch can't, just cannot put them to the sword. The French, they're still living on at 1-0 with 10 minutes to go in normal time. Still very much in the game. But they've tried every so hard, haven't they, to, to try and get that second goal. Credit to them, the Dutch. But it's still only 1-0. And Mbappe has got that ball forward to Sissoko. His touch let him down there. Much to the relief of the Dutch supporters as De Jong plays it forward. Just couldn't pick out Wijnaldum. And the uh, sliding Kimpembe puts it out of play for a throw to the Dutch down the left-hand side. 16 attempts for the Netherlands, 10 on target. For France, 7 attempts, 2 on target. Tells its own story. 62% of the possession for the Netherlands. But all, all of that means nothing. It's only one nil. Yeah, they've, they've had a, they've had some wonderful teams over the years, haven't they? The Dutch and they, you know they, they've been you know, spoiled to a large degree. But uh, now there is a, a fresh optimism about their team uh, coming into this game. We've said it beforehand. They're back on the right road. Uh, the, the the Dutch fans are, are really get behind their team. Koeman seems to have, have certainly started something that's fresh and new here, and we've seen real evidence of it here. With, uh, been absolutely fantastic all evening. Not only that, they've been really good to watch, haven't they? They've been really entertaining, incisive. They've shown a lot of imagination in their attacking play. They've been extremely good defensively too. Certainly a sense that something is happening under Ronald Koeman. Of course, the uh, Euro qualifiers start in March. I'm sure they will be a lot better than they have been the last two tournaments to Depay curls it forward looking for Babel he's got it on the edge of the penalty area facing the goal wants to get the shot away he has and he fires it over the crossbar from 20 yards he's really crossed with himself for not testing Larice there he's the one probably out the the front three maybe a bit harsher but like he's, he's not really uh, had a, a, any great moments I think there's one header in the first half that he put down that was intelligent but he's, uh, he's somebody you expect to maybe work uh, the Reese more than, than he has done tonight I think uh, the pie has been the one that's really caught my eye in terms of his, his individual talent this is Dumfries with the cross cleared by Varane and uh, the clearance is completed by Luca Dinia again they've given it away France their possession there control of the ball has been really really poor here tonight immensely disappointing considering the quality in their side yes I know they're missing Pogba and they're obviously missing Hernandez at fullback but uh, that doesn't excuse what we've seen here 
really, really poor performance from the world champions. And yet they're still in the game with six and a half minutes to play. And less the Netherlands can pinch a second goal. And by now then brings it forward down the right-hand side for the Dutch and he's rolled it into Bergwijn who lays it off for De Jong he clips it into Wijnaldum can't get the shot away across came uh, I want to say Pavard who cut, cut in from the right-hand side he did to make that all-important interception otherwise Wijnaldum was in for a second another great ball by De Jong outside of his right boot into the path of Wijnaldum and uh, you know he was inches away from getting the shot away there been so many so nearlys for the Dutch since they scored they'll be absolutely devastated if they don't seal the victory here with six minutes to play they lead 1-0 Babel has it down the left with his back to goal goes back to Virgil van Dijk I think Ronald Koeman wants to make a change just looking at who's coming on looks like Quincy Promes another speedster about to come on here's Dumfries right hand side for the Netherlands, tries to get the cross in, Dinia makes the block, he's still got it Dumfries by the corner flag, back comes Kante, puts it out for a throw to the Netherlands, right by that corner flag and it means that Ronald Koeman can make his first change in the 85th minute, which tells again everything you need to know about how pleased he is with his size performance. Coming off will be uh, Memphis Depay, who has given Oh, sorry, beg your pardon, it's going to be Steven Bergwijn who's going to come off here and uh, he's been operating down the right hand side and so it'll be a straight swap with Quincy Promes of Sevilla coming on a pat on the back for Bergwijn as he takes his seat I think he's done a lot of unselfish stuff tonight uh, for the Dutch team he's been the one that's been pressing the ball he's been uh, making runs decoy runs a lot of the time and uh, the, we talked about the pressure of the ball when they lose the ball he's been the first one and the hardest working I think of all the Dutch players it's a throw to the Dutch 10 yards back from the corner flag Quincy Promes who uh, has come on 33rd cap for him his first season in Spain after his move from Spartak so, strongly linked with Southampton not so long ago and it did look odds on he'd be coming to the Premier League but that move fell through and he's on here for the final four minutes plus stoppage time with the Netherlands leading by a goal to nil here on Talk Sport 2 in the UEFA Nations League Hard to believe there's only been one goal in this game. It's been breathless, really. Hugely entertaining. And uh, a real eye-opener for those that thought the Dutch weren't going to be back on the international stage. Well, watch this performance and think again. It's, uh, played forward down the right-hand side. Pavard's ball in, looking for Griezmann. A name, really, we've hardly mentioned in this second half. Absolutely. I mean, that's credit to, to the, uh, the the Dutch team. I can't remember Sillerson making too many saves. I think he had one from Griezmann in the first half. With the header, yeah. I can't really remember him uh, making another worthwhile save, Gary. Even that one was fairly routine, wasn't it? Because uh, Griezmann headed it into the ground from 12 yards out. He'd have been devastated to have been beaten from there. In the final three minutes... Holland have a throw in their left back area Ronald Koeman pacing rather nervously because the lead is slender even though they've dominated the match pretty much from start to finish they haven't been able to kill the game and uh, with the brilliance on offer for France up front it only takes one chance to pinch a point and seal top spot in the group but here come the Dutch again some beautiful football Depay 25 yards from goal just stopped by N'Golo Kante lovely link up there with Vijnaldum beautiful football again the French have contrived to give it away fortunately for them the Dutch presented it straight back to them a little back kill from Mbappe doesn't pick out Dembele and it'll be a free kick here to the Dutch and Ronald Koeman I think wants to bring on Tony Villenia in midfield the yellow card is shown here by Anthony Taylor I think it was uh, to do 
Dembele who just pulled back Dumfries so a yellow card for the substitute so uh, a lot of frustrated French players out there, there are, yes. they've, been, they've, been around. they've been chasing shadows for the majority of this game and, uh, I said it, I think it's uh, it's been a, a football lesson, I think, being uh, dealt out to them by, uh, by Holland. And, uh, well, Adam's coming off, uh, got his goal, big hook from uh, Koeman. He's been magnificent, as all of the, the Dutch players have. On comes Feyenoord's Tony Villena for his 14th cap, aged just 23. Second change made by Ronald Koeman. Huge pat on the back as well for the man who might well have won the game, Jeannie Wijnaldum, who takes his seat in the Dutch dugout. We're in the 90th minute, and Villena is trying to win the ball back for the Dutch, but they've managed to hold on possession this time with Digne down the line for Dembele. France in need of a goal here because it will be out of their hands. This is their last match in the group stage of the Nations League. The Dutch go to Germany next. And if it stays like this and then they win in Germany, then they will top the group. But it's not over yet as Dinia gets the cross in. It's a poor first touch there by Mbappe. You don't expect that. And uh, the Dutch easily swatted away. And it's just a matter now of how much stoppage time there will be. Four minutes has been signalled. So this is not over by any means. But that's a foul by Ngolo Kante on Blint. And a free kick to the Dutch in their left back area. When you look at the uh, this performance and, and, and the way it looks to me, it's, it's like France have come into the game, played it like a friendly. And the Dutch are playing it as a real competitive game where the stakes are high and something to win. And that agency and, and aggression that you need, to, I think, to overcome any team hasn't been there from, from the moment the game started from the French point of view. Well, Ryan Babel is coming off here and it's uh, Bournemouth's Nathan Ake who will come on in stoppage time and who's really impressed on the south coast since his big money move from Chelsea ever present in the Premier League and uh, a big threat going forward as well from set pieces as his old club Chelsea found out when they won there in the league last season his 10th cap and that's the third and final change made by Ronald Koeman and he has to survive about three minutes of stoppage time here with his side leading 1-0 despite creating a raft of chances and seeing Hugo Lloris make 10 saves to keep the French hopes alive. France coming forward with Kimpembe up to Digne. Back to Kimpembe again, just past halfway. He's tried to roll it down the line for Digne. And he appeals for the throw. And... Uh, the Dutch think it's their ball, but it is a French throw, which is taken by Dinia to N'Golo Conte, out to the right-hand side, and Pavard. Two minutes of stoppage time played on TalkSport 2. Still the Netherlands leading by a goal to nil in League A1 of the UEFA Nations League. Great surge forward here from the French. And they win the free kick. Dumfries the right back with the foul. It was Ndombele with a terrific run forward and he's got his side a free kick. Can't remember too many positive runs like that that the French have made tonight. When you think about the plays that they've got on the pitch, it's, a, well, it's, it's unbelievable. Mbappe's got to himself over this ball. Uh, definitely doable, Gary. Well, he might fancy going for goal. It's about 30 yards out. Now he's clipped it in. Nathan Ake heads away. Powerful header to the edge of the area. And Depay completes the clearance. And uh, the Dutch have it with Quincy Promes. And that's a beautiful ball up to Depay. Nice layoff from Villena. And he's got it out to De Jong on the edge of the D. Shoots right for D. Great save again by Maurice. Oh, well, he would have deserved that goal, Frankie de Jong, for a magnificent individual display. But once again, Lloris refuses to be beaten. 
I think it's going in. I think it's a really good save. Low down to his right. Lloris has been magnificent. Uh, De Jong can't believe it. He holds his face in frustration. Hasn't yet scored for his country. That would have been a big, big goal in the fourth minute of stoppage time. And the corner was taken short. They kept it by the corner flag and they've won another corner. And again, no ambition to play the ball in. It's just keep it by the corner flag. Three minutes, 48 on the clock. Four minutes of stoppage time was signaled. And the Dutch have got the ball exactly where they want it. As far away from their own goal as it could possibly be. A throw in by the corner flag to be taken by Blint. Gets it up towards Depay. And it'll be cleared by Sissoko. Didn't really get the clearance in. Oh, a penalty's been given here. With four minutes of stoppage time played, a push spotted by Anthony Taylor yep. as France tried to play the ball out from the back. And the Netherlands here have the chance to seal victory deep into stoppage time. A silly push from Moussa Sissoko on the young. Absolutely, he's got his spot on. He had, he had a perfect position there, Anthony Taylor. And uh, definitely a penalty, yeah. And, uh, it's not as if they've been hanging on anyway, is it? They've, uh, they've been comfortable. I can't remember the, the, the disc goalkeeper still isn't having to make a save. That's how well he's been protected. Well, whatever happens now, the Netherlands have surely won with five minutes of stoppage time played, but they have the chance here to put a little extra layer of gloss on the scoreline. Memphis Depay against Hugo Lloris. Can he finally beat him? Oh, he's chipped it magnificently over the goalkeeper into the back of the net to crown a quite majestic Dutch display in Rotterdam. They toppled the world champions. It's Netherlands 2, France 0. Well, it's, a, it's certainly a penalty that is befitting of, of being the second goal and the winning goal in this game. Lloris for once can do nothing about it. It's a, and he deserves a goal. Depay has been brilliant from the word go. He's been the quality frontman that every team needs and uh, it really is nonchalant the way he just thinks that over. A world-class keeper is in great form tonight. What an arrogant penalty from Memphis Depay. It really was. He's been absolutely top class here this evening, Memphis Depay. And what a moment to take a penalty like that. A huge smile on the face of Ronald Koeman as Anthony Taylor blows the final whistle. And the Dutch have the three points they desperately needed. All they have to do now is go and win in Germany and they will finish top of this group ahead of France, who've really blown it tonight. Didier Deschamps side, absolutely pathetic by their standards. A million miles away from what we saw at the latter end of the World Cup. They simply didn't turn up here in Rotterdam, but all the credit has to go to the Dutch. They were majestic, they were magnificent from start to finish. And in truth, 2-0 is flattering to the world champions. It's finished in Rotterdam. Goals from Vijnaldum and Depay. Netherlands 2, France 0.